Nate Robinson from Sampier here, and I thought I would just take a moment to sort of give you a virtual walkthrough of what I call the uh, boutique wall over here at Sampier. I've got it organized by body style at the moment, so I'm just going to go down the line and give you an idea of, you know, what all of these different bodies afford uh, tonally and sonically. Uh, one of the first questions I have when people call me up and say they're looking for a new guitar is, you know, what back and side would and what body style because there's definitely a lot of factors to consider you know acoustic volume uh, overtone response uh, sustain um, and then you know comfort and playability and things like that um, so let's start over here um, I've got the small guitars down on this bottom row starting with the smallest recently got this in it is a uh, sort of Victorian era parlor from bourgeois called the piccolo parlor Amazing guitar, uh, H-Tone Adirondack top, and uh, Pal Rosa back and sides. And parlor instruments are, you know, appropriate for uh, certain playing styles. I, I typically recommend them for finger style, um, not exclusively, but you definitely want to, you know, avoid strumming it too hard. Um, not for the sake of, you know, the structural integrity of the guitar or anything like that. It just doesn't sound quite appropriate in my opinion. But for a finger style guitarist, they can be absolutely glorious. And one of the things that I think is interesting about Parlor is it actually suggests what kind of room you should play it in. Uh, I've often said that electric musicians have pedals, acoustic musicians, we have architecture. And let me tell you, a small guitar like that, in a corner like this, like a brick corner, or in a small room, it's just a whole universe of tone. It's really miraculous. Um, I'm gonna be doing a demo on that very shortly so you'll get an idea of how it sounds. But bigger than that, we have a single O size guitar. This is a calling single O with a sick of top and mahogany back and sides. This one is a little bit more strum friendly. Um, still a great finger style instrument and very comfortable. Um, a 14 ferret configuration on this one so you get that upper fret access in a small guitar. A lot of the smaller guitars that we carry are gonna be 12 fret but this one is 14 and um, yeah, just an exceptionally balanced, sort of dry, defined instrument. Very cool guitar. And then over here we have like a C10. You know, this is kind of like a Gibson, I don't know if I can say, Gibson L00 style guitar. You know, it's like an OM with a uh, tighter waist. It's by Callings. Um, it, it's got a really nice C neck profile I'm super into. Um, yeah, kind of a little more thumpy, kind of mid-range quality. It's an exceptionally fast player. You know, I often recommend it to uh, electric guitarists who are maybe transitioning to acoustic. I think it's an excellent choice. And um, this one actually has like a through saddle and a short scale length and some other upgrades, which I think are really wonderful. Uh, bourgeois, Italian, and mahogany back and sides, double O. We're getting a little bigger here. So just to recap, we have a parlor, single O, C10, which is kind of like a double O. Um, but you know, in a little bit more of a Gibson paradigm. Um, and then we have uh, the uh, double O, so getting a little bit bigger. Um, 14 fret here, a uh, little bit of a different body configuration in general. Notice that this one seems a little bit more symmetrical, upper bout to lower bout. Then it balances out a little differently. You know, this one has a little more of a mid range kind of bark to it, to my ear. This one is a little bit smoother, you know, both appropriate for different playing styles. Also, the Italian top gives it a nice sort of complexity. And we've got another vintage varnish, double O, mahogany and uh, Adirondack on this one. Actually, no, this one is uh, Italian as well, Italian spruce top. Hard to see with the sunburst, but beautiful sunburst at that. And the varnish finish kind of allows the guitar to vibrate more freely and hide blue construction, you know, contributes to the same end, both sort of like holdozer, holdovers from, uh, you know, old school Luthery, basically. And I have a very traditional 12 fret double O here um, with a German spruce top and East Indian rosewood back and sides. Santa Cruz guitar, so they sort of adhere to the uh, old Martin way of doing things where it's dovetail neck joint, very light build, really a sweet guitar. Uh, I like that one quite a bit. I actually ordered it after um, really digging the Eric Sky signature model. I wanted something a little different though. So German with East Indian um, as opposed to the uh, Adirondack with Cocobolo on his model. And then we've got a Collins uh, 12 fret, you know, more traditional double O, mahogany back and sides. Um, really great guitar, Adirondack top on this one. So it can really cut, but it's got a smooth cohesive sound too. And you know, a lot of people ask me about what the difference between 12 and 14 fret is. And, 
you know, I usually reply with, you know, there's sort of like a cohesion to the 12th fret. And it's like all the notes kind of sidle up to each other uh, in, in, in a fashion that's a little smoother. Um, whereas the 14 has, you know, a little bit more of a punchiness to it. And again, it's totally subjective. Some people, you know, either they want the upper fret access or they just like the sound of the 14. Other people feel like the 12th fret is totally where it's at. So it's all about the individual and the individual serial number. You know, all these guitars are, I kind of think of them as people, you know, and you just got to find the right match. Um, all right, so next row, we have orchestra models. And the orchestra model is interesting because it's sort of evolved out of the triple O shape, uh, but has an extended scale length, you know, 25 and a half most of the time. Um, so age tone, uh, Zodacote back and sides, bourgeois, OM. And then I've got this really wonderful um, Coca Bolo and Sitkata OM from Collings. We've got a Boucher, Sapele back and sides, Adirondack top. Um, then I've got a uh, Coca Bolo back and sides, Adirondack top, Boucher. It's a lot of different wood combinations here in the OM size, stands for orchestra model. It's kind of a perfect in between for a lot of people I've discovered. You know, folks are. Um, you know, thinking about stepping down from a dreadnought, tired of hugging a fridge, as I've heard, <laughs> and they're looking for something a little bit more comfortable, but they still want it to be a good strummer. And OM is kind of that perfect in between there. Uh, so I, I think you know, one of the most popular models that we sell, you know, are the OM models. Um, also, Eric Clapton did that, uh, you know, unplugged with an OM, and um, that sort of begot a whole resurgence of interest in acoustic guitars in general. So little contemporary acoustic guitar history there. You know, anything that Clapton can do uh, on an OM, presumably you could do on an OM, but you need, you know, a lifetime of, uh, of talent, I guess. <laughs> and uh, then we've got the TROM. This is a traditional Rosewood Orchestra model from Goodall. This is a very cool guitar, East Indian and Adirondack. He builds his OMs a little bit differently. You'll notice they look, it looks a little wider. The proportions and dimensions are just a little bit different. You know, Goodall very much, uh, you know, marches to the beat of his own drum. In fact, he says that he treats the tops of his guitars like drum heads and pays a lot of attention to, you know, the thicknesses at different points and he gets a very interesting response. A um, little bit more modern, very lush on the overtones. Um, we've got a, Slot head, 12 fret, more traditional OM, German spruce top, East Indian back and sides from Bourgeois. And, and we've got this one here. This is the H13. So this is a Nick Lucas style guitar. We've been talking up to this point about 12 and 14 fret guitars. This is 13 frets, so it's a little bit different. And it's also got uh, like a dreadnought depth to it. So if you're looking for a guitar that can really project, but you don't want to be hanging over it too much with your arm up in the air, this is a good choice for you. Um, very much its own thing. I think of it as a really articulate, woody, almost jazzy type guitar. Um, flat top, really cool. This one, B-Swings Mahogany Back and Sides, uh, Adirondack Top, it's very sweet. And, um, OM Grand from Santa Cruz. So that's like a scaled up OM. It's a bigger, lusher sister, I think they refer to it, the uh, OMG. Cool guitar, especially for those who are, you know, thinking of OM, but they want a little bit more bass response. They want a little bit more acoustic volume. Um, sometimes acoustic volume is really important to folks who play with a lot of other people and people who play in string bands, bluegrass bands, situations where you're not going to be able to plug in, but you need to be heard. You know, then you're really going to have to start thinking about, I need a loud guitar. It's going to sit in well that way. But if you don't want to dread, but you want something big that can put out a lot of volume, you know, OM Grand or, you know, some of the comparable sizes like Grand Auditorium or uh, stuff like that can be a good fit. And then we get to the sort of slope dreads here. So this is a uh, CJ35. It's a straight braced slope shoulder dreadnought style design. Slope shoulder gives it a little bit more focus, a little more mid-range, I feel. It kind of just, it's still plenty loud, but just whew, goes straight forward. Um, really excellent guitar, I love that one. I, I like to say that every note is in its own postal code. There's just tons of string definition on it. I also really dig the Tiger, tiger Guard and, 
uh, the sicka that they use on top is very, very particular. Um, I've heard that he'll go through like hundreds and hundreds of pieces and refuse to build them until um, one of the guys calling this is until he finds one that meets the criterion for the sicka that they do on the 35 mile, uh, 35 models especially. We've got the banjo killer. What can I say about that? It kills banjos. It's an incredibly powerful guitar. Another slip tread design. Really nice. Bear claw on the top too. And we've got a bourgeois country boy, Addy top, mahogany back and sides. Wonderful guitar. And then we've got a D2HA. Collins, uh, so Adirondack, that's what the A stands for, East Indian back and sides, the binding up and down the neck and on the headstock, really an elegant dread with tons of lush overtones and sustain. Um, got age tone mahogany D, got an age tone signature styled, uh, that'd be Adirondack and Madagascar. So this is a nice sort of comparison control thing I've got going on if you wanna hear the difference between mahogany and rosewood, yeah, can't get easier than this. You can really go back and forth, see what each has to offer. And up on the top row, we got uh, the McPherson's, which is a complete structural reimagining of the instrument, basically. Well, they're bookended by a uh, Frank's Legacy Dread and a, um, a good all uh, traditional rosewood dread. Uh, Frank's has Coca-Bolo, that has East Indian, um, both have Addy Tops. Uh, both of those guitars are sort of um, styled after the iconic, iconic like 28 style guitars of yore, but each does something a little bit different with the design, a sort of a, you know, um, reimagining history, creating a, you know, rosewood, or in the case of Coca Cola, rosewood like, um, you know, square shoulder dreadnought for the 21st century. Very cool instruments, book ending there. Uh, but then we got the McPherson's, like I was saying, total reimagining of the instrument. They have, taken great pains to ensure they can build as structurally stable and resonant of an instrument as they can through some innovations in the bracing system, braces overlap, so vibrations extended very completely across the soundboard. And uh, yeah, that's what it looks like on the inside. Pretty impressive, huh? And then the sound hole off to the side, there's no real reason why sound has to be in the center, you know, that ended up kind of being convention. The top's actually more stable with it off to the side like this. Plus it puts you as the player a little bit closer to the sound source. So, yeah, I know that was a lot of talking and it went really quick and I would be happy to focus on any given area, you know, back and forth across this wall. Um, so give me a call, you know, I'm really into finding people to write guitars. I'm really into having a lot of options because everybody's different and they're gonna be using in different contexts. Um, yeah, love to speak with you. We have financing in place. So um, if one of these guitars uh, you feel like you really express yourself on, uh, but it might be slightly out of your price range, you know, we can work something out. We got layaway, we take trade-ins, we do consignment. Actually, this wall behind us here is all sort of uh, consignment and trade-in stuff. So yeah, Robinson of Sound Pure signing off after a very long-winded encapsulation of the boutique wall here at Sound Pure in lovely Durham, North Carolina. Thanks for watching and give us a call sometime.